Okay, everyone. So the next part of um, this section here is talking about um, a new law or I guess theory that goes along with enthalpy change for um, in particular chemical reactions. So um, the law here is called Hess's law. And essentially what's happening is, um, maybe before I even get into this, reactions very rarely happen in one single step. So for example, let's say we had um, 2A plus B making C, okay? So you have to think that these three particles have to all come together and cause a successful collision and produce a product, right? So that means there has to be enough energy to break all those bonds. And then of course, energy is released when the new bonds are created. So usually when reactions occur, they happen in what we call multiple steps or they're called elementary steps. Okay, so, or um, elementary steps. So um, sometimes this is called, a, usually we do refer to this as a reaction mechanism. So for example, we may have A reacting with, um, actually, let me just clarify that. We may have A producing um, a new product and perhaps that product then reacts with another A to produce a different product and then D would react with B to produce C, okay? So what happens is here we have three individual steps, but what the idea of Hess's law is, is essentially that all of these individual steps, one, two, and three, they should add up to this overall reaction. So if we were to add this up, how this works is if you have something that is common on either side, we cancel them. So here we have E and E. So technically the product of this reaction is being used up in the second reaction, right? So it's not in, in the overall reaction itself. The D would cancel out with D. So what we would be left with are two A's, a B, and a C product. So we have three different elementary steps that will add up to the overall reaction that we would see up here. So this is called a reaction mechanism. Okay, so mechanisms can have, you know, two steps, it can have 10 steps, um, but the process is still the same. The individual steps in that mechanism should add up to the overall reaction itself. And that's essentially what Hess's law is all about. So Hess's law states that the sum of the individual steps should add up to the overall reaction. Okay, so not only with the equation itself, but also with the delta H values. So for example, let's now say that we have delta H numbers here. Let's use a different color. So let's say delta H for step number one was five joules. Okay, so obviously I'm kind of just making up numbers here. Let's say the delta H for the second reaction was negative 10 joules. And the delta H for the third reaction here was um, negative five joules. So the delta H of the overall reaction should be one plus two plus three. So this would be basically these two void each other out. So the overall reaction delta H would be 10 joules, or I should say negative 10 joules. So five, negative 10, negative five. And that's in a nutshell what Hess's law is. So what type of questions or what type of scenarios are gonna come across? Well, usually how this goes down is you're gonna be given a mechanism but it may not be in the proper order that it is in as I have it laid out here. You may have to flip things around or multiply by a factor, but really the goal is the same. You're gonna be given a mechanism. The goal is to make sure that the individual steps add up to the overall, and then we can prove it with the delta H values at the end of the day. So let's go back and take a look. So here is a very kind of simplified one. We have, here we can see that there's two steps. So we have one reaction that's going from this to this, 
and the second reaction from NO to NO2. So if we were to extend this, all right, so our first step is N2 plus O2 uh, making NO, right? So it's like this to this, and that was 90 kilojoules, all right? We can see that here. The second step is going from NO to NO2. And we can see that this step here is negative 56 kilojoules. So if you were to add these two up, and this is it here, so essentially we were to add up this reaction to this reaction, the NOs would cancel, and we'd be left with N2 plus O2 making NO2. Okay, so the delta H for this would essentially be 90 minus 56, which is this right here. So the change from the, so here are the reactants, here is the final product. Delta H is really the product value minus the initial value, or you can think of it as it's step number one plus step number two. So 90 plus negative 56 gives us positive 34. Okay, so obviously this is already pre-set up for us. Okay, typically Hess's Law problems are not this easy. You have to rearrange it like I was mentioning. So let's take a look at something a little bit more complex. Okay, so here we have um, a mechanism that's given to us here. So we have, it looks like we have three steps, right? So we have step number one, step number two, step number three. And we're told what the delta H values are for each one. Okay, so we are trying to determine the chemical equation for the combustion of propane. So essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to calculate the delta H for the burning of propane given these following steps. So the first thing you need to do is since you have the mechanism, you should be writing out what the overall reaction is that the goal is to add up to. So remember back here, right, our goal was to add up to 2A plus B making C. And here are the steps. Well, here they tell you the steps, but they didn't give you the goal. But of course, we know how to write out the combustion for propane. So propane, uh, oxygen, and it's a complete combustion. So this is the goal that we want one, two, and three to add up to, okay? But it's not in the proper positioning. We'll see what that means. So I want you to notice here, propane is a reactant. So when we add these up, we need the propane to be on the reactant side. So if you take a look at these steps, propane currently is showing on the product side. So what we would have to do is essentially flip this reaction around to get this as a reactant. So when you're choosing to manipulate these steps, what you're gonna do is you're gonna multiply the step by a factor. And whenever you want to flip them around, the factor is a negative, okay? So our factor for this very first one is gonna be negative one. So let me explain why that is. So the negative means we're going to flip it. And the reason why we're gonna multiply by a one is because if you look at the overall reaction we wrote out here, when there's no coefficient, it's as if there is a one. So we want one propane, but we want the propane to be on the reactant side. So that's our first one. Now for the second one, so I'm gonna make a note here for you. You should remember this for future when you're doing sample problems of this. Do you notice how oxygen is in multiple steps? Like oxygen is in step two and in step three. So anytime you have something that occurs or shows up in more than one step, we're gonna leave this for the end. It does, it's not because it's oxygen, it's because of the fact that it shows up twice. So if you notice, propane is only in this first step. There is no propane here. There is no propane here. So we know propane has to come from this reaction. 
Okay, so we're going to hold off on oxygen for now. We'll skip over to carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is in our second step. In this case, actually, it's on the correct side. So carbon dioxide is a product. Carbon dioxide is a product there. However, here we need three carbon dioxides, and this is only showing one. So that means the factor we're going to be multiplying the second step by has to be a three. So remember, we're not doing negative three because it's already on the proper side. If we had to flip this around, we would be putting a negative three. All right. And then we have water. Okay, so again, water is actually only in this very last step. It's on the correct side, so it's on the product side, except we need four of them. This is showing only one. So we're going to multiply this guy by a factor of four. Okay, so once you have one factor per step, okay, so your, think of your, these step itself can only be multiplied by one factor. Once you've identified the factor for each one, you're done. What you're going to do then is see if when you multiply the factors, when you add them up, if you get this reaction itself. Okay, don't worry about the delta H's for now because you want to first make sure you have the correct factors chosen. So that's what this portion here is showing you. So equation one, we're going to multiply by negative one. So here is it flipped around. So notice propane's on the reactant side now. Equation two, we multiplied by three. So here it is. And equation uh, three, we multiplied by four. And here it is. So here's our three carbon dioxide and our four water. So don't worry about the delta H for now. We'll come back to that. So what you would then do is add all of the reactants together on one side. So these are basically the reactants from all three of these equations. So one propane, three carbon, three oxygen, four hydrogen, two oxygen. They're all here. You're going to then put all the products on one single line from these three steps. So three carbon, four hydrogens, three carbon dioxide, four waters. And what you would then do is cancel out what is on either side. So the same way, let me go back for a second, the same way where we canceled this E with this E, because one was on the reactant side, one was on the product side, you're gonna do the exact same thing. So we have three carbons, cancels out with three carbons. We have four hydrogens, we're gonna cancel out with four hydrogens. We're not canceling out propane because there's no propane here. We're not gonna cancel out these oxygens, there are no oxygens here. And we're not gonna cancel out our carbon dioxide or water for the same reasoning, there is none on this side. So if you, uh, another point, so once you've canceled out what's on both sides, you then look to see if you can collect like terms. So meaning, if you have more than one of the same compound or atom or molecule on the same side, you're going to put them together, right? So here you have three oxygen and two oxygen. Well, those are going to come together to make our five oxygen, okay? So once we've done that, you rewrite it out, obviously cleaning up what you've removed or what you've put together, and you now have the exact same reaction that our goal was to create. So what that means is you have the correct factors. Now let's say you did this and you were not able to cancel out something properly or it didn't match up. That means you need to go back to square one and relook at the factors that you've done, okay? The delta H part is easy after that. Once you know your factors are correct, what you do is you multiply your delta H by the exact same factors, and that's being shown here. After, to get the overall delta H, you simply add them up, up. Sorry, delta H1 plus delta H2 plus delta H3 in this case gives you your overall delta H for the reaction. The same way that we did this here, we did one, two, and three together. 
If you've chosen the correct factors, you would add up one, two, and three together to get your overall delta H.